This is going to be a video about the Ecuadorian national team, probably the most underrated national team in the world right now. And I don't say that lightly. I genuinely don't think anybody is talking about how good this team is. And when they do talk about Ecuador, it's, I can't believe they're in third. How is this trash team in third place in South America? Oh my gosh, come the balls fell off. It's terrible. Look how easy it is. Man, this has got to stop. I'm sure most people saying that are people that don't even know that South American countries have a domestic league. I'm just going to throw that out there. They probably don't. They much certainly have never watched one of these games. They don't know the talent that exists in South America. And they probably never watched Ecuador play. They just know it's a small country, you know. Ecuador, Equator, it must be hot there, that's probably all they know, and then they draw a conclusion. When in reality, this is one of the scariest teams right now, not just in South America, but in the whole world. I would not want to be playing Ecuador in a do-or-die match right now, especially not in Quito. Welcome to Yankee Football, guys. This is a channel here on YouTube where me and my friends talk about everything football from the perspective of American casuals. If you want to hear coverage from topics like the Colme Bowl, like CONCACAF, like the Asian qualifiers, things that you don't really see spoken about that much, then I think this is the place for you. Hit that subscribe button. Te vas a pasar un buen tiempo. I think you're going to have a good time here. Welcome to the family. I started the video off with how fans are underrating Ecuador, and it's not just the fans. It's actually FIFA right now, currently, I just checked, has Ecuador as the 46th best national team in the world. They are virtually tied, in however their score works, with the Republic of Ireland. I watch a lot of European football. I watch a lot of South American football. Ireland is terrible, but that's not even the, the most egregious example. Probably even worse than that is the fact that Tunisia is 16 points higher than Ecuador. And so maybe people are referencing this FIFA list, and that's why they think Ecuador is not that good. But I promise, guys, if you have the opportunity to ever watch these guys play, you will be entertained. The final score might even be nil-nil. Nobody might score, but you're going to have a good time watching Ecuador because these guys are excited. Their manager is from Argentina, Gustavo Alfaro. I think he's not been in charge that long. Couldn't have been more than like a couple years. But he has these guys firing right now. And this is a very young Ecuador team. The average age just over 25 years old and i'm sure the second one of these keepers retire because their keepers are pretty old like 30 34 35 years old once one of these guys go i mean the average age is probably gonna drop to like 24 maybe even 23 this is a young promising squad they are in no way shape or form in their prime and they're already making teams like argentina and brazil they're making them sweat, dog. Under Alfaro, they usually play a 4-3-3. And sometimes they do drop down into two blocks of four, and 4-4-2. Four, four, um, but it seems like they really only do that against the more dangerous South American opponents. You know, Brazil, teams like that. Now, I say these guys are really fun to watch because of how they attack. But the defense for Ecuador is actually one of the main reasons that they are as good as they are right now. And it's led by probably the most slept on defender in the world you could say i mean that might sound like oh my oh, bro you're just being hyperbolic i don't even think so piero in campier is actually an, an animal and he just moved to buyer leverkusen he's gonna be playing in the bundesliga now i'm super excited for this i hope he's not the the last ecuadorian from from this generation to go overseas and, and really develop but the guy is a beast dangerous on set pieces locking up strikers on the other team I mean, who knows? He could be one of the best defenders on the continent by the time he's 25. The guy's 20 years old. But it's not just in Campia. You got Estupiñan on the left, plays for Villarreal. Very, very good player. He's got to be 25 years old, 26 years old max. You got Byron Castillo, who plays in the Ecuadorian Domestic League, like their version of... I think the club's called Barcelona. It's not the same Barcelona. It's the Ecuadorian version of Barcelona. But nonetheless, very promising player. And the right back, Preciado. He's a really good player, too. You know, he's got this afro some of the time, so pretty easy to pick him out on the screen uh, whenever you see him. He had a great game against Brazil last time out. Um, really did a good job against Vinicius, which is never easy. I mean, just ask everyone in La Liga. The guy's been tearing it up. But this back line, man, they're not scared of anybody. They're young. They're hungry. They're aggressive. They're physical. 
and they are tough to score against. Ecuador is one of three teams in Combo Bowl right now who are allowing less than one goal per game. They're pretty close. They're allowing like 0.9 per game. Okay, so they're they're right there, but still, I mean, this is this is an achievement that should be commended, and nobody before this Combo Bowl process started was looking at Ecuador and saying, hmm, they're gonna, you know what? These guys are gonna have a top defense in the continent. Yeah, these guys, they're not going to allow goals. Oh, yeah, the guy with the 19-year-old center back start? Yeah. And the right back's 20? And the other left back is 24? No, no. These guys locked down. Nobody was saying that. People probably thought Ecuador was going to get cooked. Not just because it's really hot there. And it is hot there. I, I've been there. The defense is good. Sometimes the attack is even better. I mean, they have a particular player who I've become a really big fan of lately. Gonzalo Plata plays over in the second division of Spain currently. And the guy was oh my gosh so they just drew against brazil 1-1 i hope you guys had the pleasure of watching that game absolute madness red cards var penalties everything getting overturned it was an absolute conmebol mess but it was a beautiful mess like a like a really tasty but disgusting looking lasagna hope that made sense to some of you guys out there but this guy gonzalo plata he had alexandro sweating the entire game the confidence that this kid has on the ball is ridiculous. He was making him dance all game and he's been making defenders dance all qualifying and I'm super excited for when Ecuador goes to the World Cup because I bet you people are going to be looking around at Plata and some teams are going to say this guy he's worth a 25 million dollar risk. I think we got to get him in the squad. I'm just I'm calling it now. He's making a big move once Ecuador makes it to the World Cup. They've smacked Colombia 6-1. They beat Uruguay 4-2. They just drew Brazil 1-1. Very, very unlucky to not come away with the win. Guys, Ecuador is legit. Please watch these guys. Please give them a chance. It is some of the most entertaining football you are going to be seeing on the international stage. Once they go into the World Cup, guys, I'm going to predict it right now. They're going to do some damage. I don't know, obviously, who is going to be in their group. But if it's even remotely favorable... I mean, don't be surprised if these guys make it to the knockout stage. Don't don't be surprised if they get a favorable draw in the knockout stage if they upset somebody. I'm sick of this team not getting any recognition whatsoever. And it's not just an Ecuador problem. Sometimes it's it's just a South American problem in general. But everybody is making these excuses for why Ecuador is doing well. Oh, it's because Uruguay is old. Oh, it's because Yamez isn't playing well anymore. So now Colombia sucks. How about Ecuador? It's just a well-run insanely athletic well-structured team how about that ecuador has a really big game coming up against peru i'm not sure if it's in lima or at another venue uh you know throughout the country but that game is sure to have some fireworks number three and number four and calm bowl going head to head with uruguay hot on their tails man it's gonna be a good one this is why i love calm bowl qualifying man it's a good time start to finish there's rarely a bad game even when the Bad teams go against each other. You get a freaking 4-1 last night, Venezuela against against Bolivia. If that's your idea of boring, terrible football, a 4-1 scoreline, yeah, I'll take that. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the end of the video about the Ecuadorian national team and why I think they're the most underrated team in international football right now. You guys let me know down in the comments what you think about Ecuador. Are they a lock for third place? Are they going to slip? Is there any chance that they don't go to Qatar? I mean, you got to say the Uruguayans have a chance. They got a shot. I don't know who's in sixth right now, probably Colombia or something, but... It's going to be close, but if Ecuador gets one more good result, I think they're a lot. We got more Combo Bowl content coming for you guys later, so hit that bell icon so you don't miss that video. Again, appreciate the time and watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Vamos la tri!